ಅಪ್ಯಂತುಮಂಗಾಕ್ರಾಣಸ್ಯಕ್ಷುಶ್ರೂತ್ರಮತುಬಲಮೇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಚರ್ವಾಧರ್
Urupada says, no nirudhu, no chotputti, no baddhu, no sadhuka, no mumukshur, no mai bhukta, ittesha paramarthata. Paramarthata, the ultimate truth is, there is no dissolution, nirudhu. No chotputti, there is no creation. No dissolution, no creation. No bondage, no liberation. No spiritual aspirant, no desire to know the Atman, Brahman. This is the ultimate truth. Sometimes it is confusing to us. Well, when this doito, this duality dissolves, the ultimate reality prevails. The ultimate. How can I realize it? Madanta says, Shruti bo, Shruti bhakti bo, Mantabhyusya upati vihi, Matvasa satatam deya, it is darshan hitabha. Darshan, darshan means to see, to see, to realize. How can I realize? Shruti bo, shruti vakya bo, listen, listen carefully. The teachings of the Upanishads, the experiences of the seers of truth, listen from your guru. Then reflect, think about it. Only listening will not do. Sometimes people listen, it goes through one ear and it goes through the other ear. No, not that way. Reflect on it, think about it. And then meditate on it. Through meditation, the door will open. Shankara mentioned this human life is very precious. It is not easy to get a human body. These three things are rare. Shankara mentioned in Krishna, in Viveka Churamani. Manushuttam, human birth. Mumukshuttam, desire for liberation. And Mahapurusha Sankara, the company of a great soul. If you have these three, you are fortunate. Shankara mentioned that why are you born in this world? What for? Jivan mukti sukha prapti hitave janma dharitam atmana nitta mukti na natu sangsaru kammaya. Which is a great verse of Vedanta Shankara says, Swami Turiyananda says that when I read that verse, I really, really understood what is the purpose of human life. Jivan Mukti, bliss of Jivan Mukti, living free while you are living. You will experience the bliss of, li of illumination in this very birth, while you are living in this world. For the reason you are born. Otherwise, Atma is Nitya Mukta, it has no desire. Atman has no desire. He has no desire to enjoy this world. You see, it is the desire which is the problem. Desire. What does it come from? Ignorance. What does that desire do? They force, my, they force us to work. You may be billionaire, but billionaire has billionaire desires. <laughs> Bill Gates or Zeb Bose, they know that Microsoft and, and Amazon, these are rich people. They have rich desires, many desires. In Brother Nukapanishad, we find four words about desire, akamu. An illumined soul, his desire does not go outside for external objects. Nishkamu. He does not, he does not have desire inside also. Some people harbor desire in the mind. Third, up to come. 
Up to Kama means his old desires are full. If the pitcher is full, you cannot put any more water. So his old desires are full. No more desires. And Atma Kama, he only desires for the Atma. That is the sign of a living soul. Vedanta, we, are, we shall talk about Shankara's philosophy. I'm just giving a little introduction so that you know what we are going to study tonight, today. Ajatabad, Shankara's guru's guru. As I said, this wisdom of Vedanta came from guru to disciple. Brahma gave this Vedanta teachings to his son Vashishto. Vashishto to Shakti, Shakti to Parashara, Parashara to Vyasa, Vyasa to Shukadeva, Shukadeva to Gaudapada, Gaudapada to Govindapada, Govindapada to Shankara. From Shankara came the ten sects of Vedanta teachers. And they spread this message of Vedanta all over the world, all over India. <coughs> Ajatubad. Na kushit jayati jiva. Shambhavo isana vidati. Eta duttamam sattam. Chatkinchit na jayati. We see this world, we see human beings. He says, Gurupada says, these human beings are not born. Nobody produced them. This is the highest truth. Brahman, Atman doesn't born. Aja. I remember one of the very funny stories. One of my friends was a follower of Ajatavada. He used to believe that I am not born. So we are in Adit Ashrama. So his mother sometimes used to come to see him. And she, he used to bring a lot of foods. Lot of food. So we, we used to tease him. Now you go, tell your mother, who are you, woman? Because you say that you are not born. <laughs> we used to tease him. That I am not born. So you go to your mother and tell him, who are you, woman? Funny. <laughs> sometimes those who come to Vedanta, I sometimes explain them. Watch my five fingers. Osti bhati priyo. Existence, knowledge, bliss. That is Brahman. Nama rupa. That is Maya. This Nama Rupa, in this world, how do we live in? We have all names, we have all forms. Whatever we see in this world has a name, has a form. A name and form evolve and dissolve. It is just like the ocean. A billions of waves are rising and falling, rising and falling. So all this creation we, you see in the ocean of that consciousness, we are rising and falling. Try to understand this world in this way. Sapsritam is that consciousness, Brahman. Without that Brahman, we are nobodies. Well, that is the introduction. Now I shall tell you about Shankara's life. Shankara lived only 32 years. Emerson says, great geniuses have the, have the shortest biography. Shortest biography, all the great genius. Anyhow, <coughs> Shankara's father's name was Shiva Guru and mother's name was Vishishta. They are in Kerala. 
There was a village named Kalaji. I went there in 1986. I stayed there for two, three days. Beautiful place. Very close to that Purna or Alva Nivar. Shankara, this old man has no children. So they went to the nearest Shiva temple, their village temple and the deity. So they fast they and pray to Lord Shiva to give them a son. She was pleased, appeared before them. What kind of son do you want? If you want short book, all knowing, you will not live long. Or if you want an ordinary son, that also is possible. What kind of son do you want? Did Gayu? a son with long life, or a son short life, but all-knowing. What kind of son do we want? Well, we want a son which is short book, all-knowing. Then Shankara says, then I will have to be born as your son. That is the way Shankara was born. <clears throat> Very precocious boy. He has Shruti Dhar, whatever he hears, he does not forget. His father died when he was three years old. Poor mother sent him to a school. And the teachers are very fond of this little boy because he was brilliant. Whatever he hears, he does not forget. So he learned all this Ramayana, Mahabharata, all the literature, when he was three, four years old. You see, we read the same book again and again, again and again, but he does you not have to read. Whatever I hear, he remembers. Whatever he reads, he remembers. Then at the age of five, he has the secret ceremony. Then he went to the Guru Griyo. There he learned all the Vedanta and other scriptures. Then <clears throat> one day, as he, like a brahmachari, he went to bake food from door to door. So he went to a poor family. And that woman said, we are so poor, we cannot give you anything. I am sorry. She was start, started to cry. I have only one amuloki fruit that I can give to you. He took that amuloki fruit and prayed to the goddess of fortune, Mother, please make these pe people rich. The Divine Mother said, they are karma made him them poor. How can I make them rich? Mother, they gave me amuloki. They, they give something to me. All right. Next day they found their house all around, all gold amulokis, gold, gold, gold. So his news spread everywhere. People are curious to know about his miraculous power. Then the king, Kuloshekar, he came, he wanted to see this boy and sent the elephant. He said, no, I am a brahmachari. I do not go to the king. I don't need anything. Why should I see a king? Then the king himself came and paid respect to this little boy and gave them some property so that their family will not suffer. One day, his mother went to take bath in the Alwai River, but that old lady on the way fell down. So he brought back his mother to the home and he was praying to the to the, to the Divine Mother, Mother, why don't you bring the river near our home so that my mother will not have to walk such a long distance to have bath? Next day, the river came near their home. The course of the river changed. 
I remember I took bath there. I went in the middle of the river, only maybe ways deep. I had to bend to take bath there. <laughs> but the story goes, One day he went to bath, take bath with his mother, and crocodile caught him. And he was crying, Mother, the crocodile caught me. Please give me permission so that I could be a monk. Then perhaps my life will be saved. Mother was crying. What to do? At last she gave permission. The crocodile leapt. All the crocodiles were caught by the fishermen. And Shankara's life is saved. At that time he was eight years old. He took Shainash and he left home. His mother was crying. <coughs> then Shankara promised that I shall look after you. Even at the time of death, I shall appear before you. He was very devoted to his mother. Then he heard about the name of Govinda Pada, the great yogi. Some people say that he is Rishi Patanjali. He used to live in Onkareshwar. There also I went in 19, I think 90, I went. <coughs> On the bank of the Normada River. Very holy place. Govinda Pada has many disciples, but he was immersed in Samadhi for hundreds and hundreds of years. Nobody knows. Shankara went to him and, and sang a hymn, eight verses on the Guru. Shariram surupam sadaroga muktam, jasas charu chitram dhanam erutullam, guru rangi padme manasyan nalagnam, tatakim, 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 kalatram dhanam putra putra di sarvam, Griyam bandhava sarva meta dijatam Guru rangi padme manasena lagnam Tatakim, 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 tatakim Sharangadi vedu mukha shastra vidda Kovitancha goidda vasupaddam karuti Guru rangi padme manasena lagnam Tatakim, 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 tatakim In this way he repeated eight verses. The meaning is, Shariram Shurupo, you might have a beautiful body, diseaseless body. Shariram Shurupo, Joshashar, you might have a fame, you might have a wealth like the mountain, but if you do not have love or devotion for the Guru, what does it avail? What does it avail? What does it avail? You might have friends and family. You may be very famous. Your home may be very, very fancy home. But if you have no devotion, what does it mean? For your guru, what does it mean? You may be a great writer, great poet. But if you have no devotion for the guru, what does it mean? What does it mean? In this way, he repeated eight verses on the Guru. Immediately, slowly, slowly, Govinda Pada opened his eyes. He realized that my successor, my student arrived. So he started to teach him. The first year he taught Hatha Yoga. Second year, Raja Yoga. Third year, Jnana Yoga. He was fully equipped, got the wisdom. Then the Guru said, now you go to Banaras, Kashi. Banaras is the seat of learning and culture of India, Varanasi. Now you go and teach Vedanta. Then Guru gave up his body. He came to Banaras. One day he went to take bath in the Ganges and they found a woman who is seated on the step with a dead body. 
And he asked the woman, please, this is the bathing ghat, take your husband to the, uh, to the uh, cremation ground. Then that woman says, why don't you ask the um, this Jajbaji to go to the cremation ground? Are Jajbaji cannot go. Jajbaji is a genre matter. But, but you preach that everything is Brahman, everything is consciousness, so Jajbaji is consciousness, let it go. Then he realized, my goodness. Then that dead body and that woman disappeared. It was the Divine Mother who wanted to give him teachings. Do you know what is the problem? He didn't believe in Shakti. He understood Brahman, not Shakti, power of Brahman. Then another day he found a Chandala is walking through the street with four dogs. So Shankara said, Dura Mabhasarade Chandala. He outcast, give my way, stay away from the street. Then that man says, Chandala says, whom are you ta talking to? Chandala? Are you asking the body or, 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 or the dog or me? You say that everything is Brahman, everything is Brahman. We still you have this power of discrimination that you are Brahmin, you are Chandala. Shankara realized his mistake. Then it was Lord Shiva appeared before him and told him, Go to Badurika Ashram and write about Vedanta. I bless you. So we went to Badurika Ashram in the northern part of India in the Himalayas. I went there in 1977, Kedarnath, Badrinath. I went to Basho Gumpa. People say where Shankara wrote that commentaries. Within four years, he wrote all of his writings. 150 book, 51 books. <laughs> 50 books as a spiritual instructions, 75 hymns he wrote, 28, 22 commentaries. Then he came to Uttar Kashi. There he found that a Brahmin came, old man, wanted to debate with him. So they have started. Seven days, nobody could defeat each other. Then Shankara's disciples see that this man is not an ordinary man. Why don't you ask him that who he is? So Shankara asked, please tell me who you are. <coughs> he says, I am Basha. I wanted to test you. So Basha was very pleased that you got the good lessons of Vedanta and you are understood what Vedanta is. Now you preach this Vedanta all over India. You are supposed to die at the age of 16, but I am extending another 16 years so that you will live up to 32. What a wonderful way. <laughs> Shankara began to travel, but the first you go and defeat Kumaril Bhatta. He is, a, he is an exponent of Mimamsa philosophy, the Karma Kanjo, the working part, the ritualistic part of the Vedas. So he went there, he found that he was dying. 
So Kumaril says, I have no time to talk to you, but if you defeat my disciple, Manjan Mishra, then that will be equal to my defeat. So you go to Maheshwati and debate with him. So Shankara went with him, to, went to him. And there is a great debate. Who would be the umpire? Manjan Mishra's wife, named Uvai Bharati. He became, she became the umpire. She is an incarnation of Saraswati. So seven days debate. On the eighth day, they found Manjan Mishra's garland was drying up. He was out of ideas. So he accepted his defeat. There is a condition between the defeat. If you defeat me, I'll be your disciple. And if I defeat you, you will be my disciple. So Manjana became Shaitam Shankara's disciple. But Manjana's wife says, no, 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 no. Still, it is not finished. He is my husband. Half you have defeated. Now you'll have to defeat me. Without defeating me, I won't allow my husband to go and be your disciple. So, the Mahishma, the Uvai Bharati, asked some questions about the Kamu Shastra. Shankara says about last, about sex life. Shankara says, I am a monk, I am not supposed to talk about it. Oh, and then you are defeated by me. Then Shankara says, all right, please give me one month time. I shall not talk, but I shall write about it and give it to you. I shall answer all of your questions by writing. But he knew Hato Yoga, Parukhiya Prabesh. When he can enter into a dead body, he can enter in anybody's body. He has that occult power. So they found the Amaruk country, they were going with the Shankara was going with the disciple. They found the king died. And they are about to cremate him. Shankara says, This is the best chance I got. I shall enter his body and you keep keep my body in this cave and protect it. So Shankara immediately left his body and entered in the king's body and they the people, those who brought him in the cremation ground, they are elated. Hey, our king is alive. Brought back to the home. And at night time, and he asked his wives and the other, and got all the information and wrote the book. <coughs> then they were thinking that, you know, he must be a yogi, entered our king's body. Will it burn all the bodies around the country? Anyhow, Shankara's disciple Padmapat came and reminded him. So immediately he left that body and entered into his own body and carried that book to. He gave that book to his disciple before he left the body. And then he gave to Vai Bharati. And Manjan Mishra became his disciple. <coughs> Very fan fancy story. <coughs> he has four disciples, many disciples, but four are main. All of a sudden, he experienced that, that mother's breast milk in his mouth. Immediately he remembered that perhaps my mother is thinking of me. So, through this subtle body, what is called, he went to his mother. And he cremated his mother. And before the death of his mother, he showed, she, he showed her Vishnu, her <coughs> chosen deity. Shankara traveled in India. There is a list of the places. At that time, I always remember, you like to walk on foot. 
there is no car, no <coughs> train, no aeroplane. How from Kashmir to Rameshwaram and Buddha and Dwaruka to Puri and, and the, even Assam, this whole country Swami Shankara traveled. You know, there's a list that how many places he traveled. And what he did, he defeated, at that time there are 75 philosophical schools in India. He defeated all of them and established his non dualistic philosophy. So he established four monasteries. One is Dwaroka, Sharadamot. Puri Govardhan Mat in, in the Himalayas, Joshi Mat near Badriga Ashrama. I was there. And the east and the south, Sringeri Mat. And he established with these four monasteries, protected the Vedantic tradition and the chain monastic orders, they carried the Vedantic message. So we belong to that Shankara's order. Sri Ramakrishna's guru was Tutapuri, was one of the Vedanta sects. There are 10 sects. Tirtha, Bon, Ar Aranya, Giri, Puri, Bharati, Parvat, Sagar, Ashram, Saraswati. These are the 10 monastic sects of Shankara. Now, I shall talk about philosophy. About Brahman, what is Brahman? Brahman is brihat, vast, mahan, great, all pervading, existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute, the substratum of the whole creation. So those who come to Vedanta first, do you know what they are supposed to do? They are supposed to ask, who am I? What is your true nature? I am neither the body, nor the mind, nor the senses. Siddhananda Rupa, Shivoham, Shivoham. I am Siddhananda. I am existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute. I am Brahman. But we do not think about it. We do not feel that thing. I think I am Chetrananda, I am a monk. You people think I am this, I am that. So what is our true nature? Atmanam Vidhi, know thyself. Now, if the Jibir Gyan, how shall I go? First, try to differentiate between chit and jor, consciousness and unconsciousness, spirit and matter. Spirit and matter. Subject and object. As I said, that you know, we are not born or not. This world is subject and object, drishta drishya.
आत्मा अनात्मा दिस आत्मन इज द एग्जिस्टेंस नो बजे जिनाइज हो हीज ओन एग्जिस्टेंस आई एग्जिस्ट All right, you exist. You stay like a stone all through your life. No, I like to be conscious. All right, you have your existence. You have your consciousness. I shall put you in a dungeon forever. No, I want bliss, freedom. So you see, these three things are inherent in human beings: existence. I believe I exist. I believe that I am conscious. I believe I want. I am bliss. if there is no bliss people will not live in this world so that is the true nature but we forgot it we forgot our true nature how who made this forgetfulness ignorance we forgot Shankara says in the in the Bhagya, Satya Nrite Mithuni Krita, Ahamidam Mamaidam Iti, Nushirki ko loko bhavara. The ultimate truth, Brahman, is nirgun, nirakar. That Brahman becomes shagun with his Maya power, and then comes this universe and all these beings. Shankara says, "Aham idam, I, subject, you, object. This whole world is a connection between I and you, I and you, I and you. Subject, object, subject, object. Subject is conscious, object is unconscious. So the subject and object are mixed up. That is the life going on in this world, which is natural." mixed up only subject does not work only object does not work let me give an example pure gold cannot make a jewelry you will have to add alloy then you can say pure gold is very soft so with alloy you make all the jewelry so absolute truth is samadhi you cannot function then you come relative this sometimes some people get confused this absolute and relative then absolute relative relative point brahman alone exists and nothing else but the relative stand point oh no 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 the world exists my stomach pain my headache my hunger my thirst these things are all real my husband my wife my children my family my car my home they are all real but not absolutely real that vedanta says when you go to deep sleep your husband your wife your children come everything disappears and everything appears so they started to talk about what is real and what is unreal the real is the thing which exists all the time past present and future there is nothing in this world you will find exists all the time i was born some years ago i will die some years after and in three stages jagrat shapna shujuti waking dream and sleep we are continuously fluctuating the thing which changes the thing which is created is subject to destruction that is the conclusion of vedanta the thing which is created is will day will be destroyed but brahman cannot be destroyed brahman is eternal so what is the problem problem is in ignorance what is ignorance vedanta shastra gives 
six adjectives, six signs of an ignorance. Shat asat. It is neither real nor unreal. Real like Brahman, eternal, or unreal like, like mirage. It is neither real nor unreal. It is, it is, it is something. Next is onir bochindo. You cannot explain. How will you explain? Darkness cannot explain darkness. Ignorance cannot explain ignorance. Onir bochindo, unspeakable, unthinkable, inconceivable. The third. Adjective is trigunat makam, it has three gunas. The whole world is the whole playing of the gunas. Then, gana virudhi, it stops, ignorance disappears when knowledge comes. The darkness goes away when the light comes. Bhava rupam, it is not abhav, it is not non existence, it exists. Ignorance. We see ignorance, shakti, power. You, see, you do not see the electricity, but you see the light. You see the microphone, you see your computer. All this function is because of that electricity. But you cannot see it. But it is there. Bhavarupan, it is something. Jyotkinchit. Jyotkinchit means. It is an austere padartho. It is very shaky, some kind of magic things, you know, this, this maya. But on we all feel it. We all experience it. You cannot deny ignorance. Every day we are experiencing my happiness, my misery, my suffering, my problems. So many things we are experiencing. How can I deny it? My hunger, my thirst, I cannot deny it. And if we know the ignorance, what will happen? Ignorance goes away. The moment you bring the light, darkness goes away. So, Vidyan Shankara says, Adhash, hey, this one, Shankara mentioned quite often, Adhash. Adhash means superimposition. Truth is there, untruth covers it. Example, rope snake. There is a rope on the floor due to darkness, not deep dark, but semi dark. I may think that it is a snake or a garland or a watermark or maybe a crack on the floor. I am projecting all these things on the same rope. The moment I bring the flashlight and see, it is a rope. So we superimposed root snake on the rope. When knowledge comes, snake goes away. Why does it go? No, because go, it is not there. It is all projections of the mind. Samaji given a beautiful example. There is a stump of a tree in the 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 in the, in the, in the park. A police was thinking that he, he was a thief. And thief was thinking he was a policeman. A man was thinking by perhaps my sweetheart is waiting for me. And a woman was thinking by my husband, somebody was my paramour is waiting for me. A child is thinking perhaps he's a ghost. All these people are projecting one stump of a tree because of darkness. So this is called Adhash, superimposition. We are all superimposed. My Atman is covered by the five sheaths, blissful sheath, intellectual sheath, mental sheath, vital sheath, and physical sheath. We covered it, and now behaving in this world, I am Chetanananda, I am this, I am that. Adhash. But how can I get rid of these things? Bichar karo. 
discrimination. What is real? What is unreal? Meditate. Vichar. This Brahman is Shaprakash. He does not need any anything to see Brahman. Let me give an example. You will understand better what I am talking about. How do we see this world? Here is the sun, and here is a mirror. I take the reflection of the mirror and playing and seeing various things. But this mirror reflection is not the original. Sunlight is the original, but this is the reflection. So, on our mind, that Brahman consciousness reflects. And our mind, we are seeing this world through the mind mirror. That is the truth. You stand in front of a mirror. What do you see? Reflection of your face. If somebody hits that face, you do not feel it. That is a reflected face. That is not real. But if in original face, if somebody hits you, it, it hurts. So all these human beings you see, they're playing with the reflected consciousness. That is called chit jand grunthi, that consciousness and the mind intellect, that antakarana, they become sandwiched. That is called tadatma dhyash, according to Vedanta. If these two becomes one, and then human beings become conscious and they play. <coughs> How can I get rid of it? Mantra is there, Aham Brahmashmi, Tattvamashi. These mantras will de de hypnotize yourself. We are all hypnotized. We are all in disguise, a Brahman, all are working as a man, woman, rich, poor. This is all Brahman. Of course, Vedantic, well, if you want to study Vedanta, you need disciplines. Shankara mentioned, Shadana Chotushtai, discrimination, renunciation, self-control, desire for liberation. <coughs> Shankara mentioned another thing, quite Emphasically, a shruti, guru, and anubhuti. These things are very important. The scripture and the guru, they will give you knowledge. And then you practice yourself. Then he decides, some people think the action and knowledge are this different. No. Action is purusha tantra. There are three alternatives that they are in action. I can do it, I may not do it, or I can do it something else. Kurtum, akurtum, annatha ba kurtum. That is me, I can decide. But knowledge does not depend, it is bostu tantra. The chair is there, I see chair. I cannot make it a water pot. My knowledge, that knowledge remains, knowledge cannot be changed. This knowledge, Chaitanya, consciousness, are the same. Same consciousness prevails in everything and every being. Again, as I say, this world, Shankaras believed the Babuharik Shatta. We get knowledge. How do you get knowledge? Through three ways. Desho, Kala, Bostu. This means space. It is room space. That is a park space. That is street space. Bathroom space. All the space, Desh, Stan. That is the way we have knowledge. Kal, time. Today, yesterday, tomorrow, time. And Bostu, object. This is chair. This is microphone. This is book. This is the way we get knowledge. A 
as I say, this whole world is in the mind. When duality dissolves, Atman prevails. What does duality do? It is a disease. If you see two moons, what does it mean? Double vision. You're, there's a glaucoma, eyes defect. You are driving cars, you see two cars are coming toward you, that means you have a problem. So you go and go to a doctor. So when we see the diversity, multiplicity in this world, that means we have a disease. And name of that disease is ignorance. How to get rid of this ignorance? That is the reason we come to spiritual life. Ishwar, Brishwar, Brahma, Jeev, Bivinna, Vadi, Nirgun, Ishwar, Jagod, Brahma. Shankara believed in bhakti. He says, Moksha Karana Samagram Bhakti Ratpi Bhakti Bhakti Rapi Bhakti Reva Goriyoshi. In the path of liberation, bhakti, devotion, devotion also is very important. But do you know how Jaji Jiji Ji find Jibu Jibushan? Sa Sarupa Nusandanam Bhakti. Search for your inno inward self, Atman, that is devotion. Shankara says. This is the way you should go. Listen, first do nishkam karma, good karma, special. Work according to the scripture. That will purify the mind. When your mind will be purified, then you practice upasana, prayer. That will make your mind one-pointed. And then will come mukti, liberation. That is the way Shankara says. You are already liberated, but you do not know. But Shankara says, this is the way you can practice spiritual disciplines, and then you will be free. Object conscious. When Vedanta says this world is not real, people think that that fellow is crazy. This world is not real, that means you are crazy. This world is so real to us. And the dancer says this world is not real. <laughs> they have many reasons. Drishatvat, Angshatvat, Jodatvat, Parichinatvat. Addhita Siddhi. They give 28 reasons and prove that the world is not real. Drishyatva, the thing which you see, that is not real. Angshatva, the thing which is a part, that is not real. Jodhatva, the thing which is a matter cannot be real. Purichinnatva, the thing which is limited, is not real. <laughs> Very interesting, Ajatavad. because the time is over. Yeah, some people think that, uh, those who th think that, you know, this, uh, this Madhuita Vedanta, Brahman Aluni is real, this world is not, unreal, is not real. I always tell people, watch two words, Asat Mitha. Asat means the thing which does not exist and you cannot see. Jaman, son of a barren woman. Are you? It does not exist. We do not see it. Or a castle in the air. We do not see it. But we see, express it. Or, but there is something, it does not exist, but we can see. Example, water in the mirage. We see, but if you go there, there is no water. It is the sun reflecting on the, on the, on the sand. Now, watch our minds. 
All human beings have five conditions. First, kshipta, restless. Second, muru, dull. Bikshipta, scattered. Ekagro, concentrated. Niruddha, calm, closed. So these five conditions of the mind. So if we watch our minds all the time, so many thoughts, good, bad, horrible, so many things are passing over the minds, we cannot express it. A terrible madness is going inside us. We, do not, we cannot express it. We will be ashamed. Our social civility will fall apart. Marriage will break. If husband tells what comes to his mind, wife says everything comes to his mind, my goodness, my goodness. We see a terrible madness is going inside us. We are mad, mad. <laughs> but we, with pant coat, we dress up, we see that I am a gentleman. But actually we are crazy. A tremendous madness is inside going on all the time. We cannot express it. Do you know what Swamiji said? Difference between sane and insane. A sane has a control over his emotions. And the insane does not have any control. That is the only difference between sane and insane. We are normal human beings, but we have pretty control. <laughs> but how can I cure my madness? Do you know what the scripture says? Take refuge in three places. God, Guru, and the scripture. Then your mind will be purified. Then all of your madness, inner madness will vanish. And the Atman will manifest. Brahma beat Paramapnuti. The Nuara Brahman attains the highest. Shukam Taruti Shatma beat. The Nuara Atman transcends grief, misery, everything. Attains supreme bliss. That is the ultimate teachings of Shankara's Vedanta. Mukti, liberation. Be free. Thank you. Uma Satuma Sad Gamayo, Tamasuma Jyoti Gamayo, Mrithurma Amritam Gamayo, Abhiravin Mayedi, Rudra Jatte Dokshinam Mukam, Tinamampa Hinitam, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Legions from the unreal to the real, legions from darkness to light. Lead us from death to immortality and light us through and through and guide us evermore with the loving presence. Peace, peace, peace be unfold.